Okay, welcome to Bible Boost. And um, as mentioned, live streaming from Melbourne, Australia. And if you've been following so far, you'll know we're in the book of Luke and we're up to chapter six. And if you're new to this, um, previously we've done the book of Philippians and also the book of 1 Peter. And I feel like as I'm doing this, I'm becoming friends with the books. There's certain books that I've always had, I've loved and had on my heart for a long time. I think James was the first book that I really started to love deeply um, and just delved into that as a teenager. And, uh, and then other books have been favourite, like 1 John and the book of John and certain Psalms. Um, but Luke has never been a favourite. But now, <laughs> now I'm becoming friends with the book of Luke and I'm really, really valuing it. Um, same thing happened with 1 Peter, um, which is really cool. Philippians is also a favourite. Um, hello, Oki Bears. Hello, welcome. Welcome to the stream and welcome to Bible Boost. Uh, let me know where you're, where you're watching from. Uh, at the moment, we're doing 15 minutes of um, just looking at the book of Luke and chapter six and thinking aloud, um, personal Bible meditation. So reading from verse one. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields and his disciples began to pick some heads of grain, rub them in their hands and eat the kernels. Some of the Pharisees asked, why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? They're always picking, weren't they? Um, Jesus answered them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and taking the con consecrated bread, he ate what is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Uh, I think it's really awesome that Jesus, one, he knew the word of God really well. And so when he was challenged, he knew how to answer. But he knew it at a level that the Pharisees and the religious leaders didn't know it at because he also knew his father intimately. So it wasn't just theory for him. It wasn't just um, tradition. It wasn't just religious rules. It was um, in incorporated in a living relationship with the father. And so he was able to interpret it um, from a... He had eyes to see things that the Pharisees didn't have eyes to see. And so he was able to, to go, hey, hang on a moment. Yes, there's the rules. But sometimes you've got to look um, and understand actually what is more important. And, um, and so he's like, even David, he did what he wasn't supposed to do because they were hungry. Um, and, um, and so this is my disciples here. They're, yes, they're, um, and, and the, the, just, the Pharisees were so picky. Look at them. They're working on the Sabbath. You're not supposed to do that. And, and how dare you? And, and they're just looking at that, you know, right and wrong and condemning them. And, um, and, and whereas they're just, they're just hungry and they're picking some things on the, on the Sabbath and, and eating. And Jesus is like, that's wrong. That's wrong. There's no love in that. Um, that's not the intent of the law. Um, they're not dishonoring God in what they're doing. And then he says this amazing phrase. And Jesus said to them, the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. Um, and um, cool. Hi, Oki Bears. Um, thanks. Watching from UT USA. Awesome. Thanks for letting me know that. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube later and you're wondering what I'm talking about, um, I'm live streaming this on Twitch and you can find me on Twitch at The Gold Archer. And I'd love you to join me there as well. Um, so he makes this phrase, the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. Um, and I'm reminded of another thing that he said in another chapter somewhere in another book of the Bible where he said the Sabbath was made for man not man for the Sabbath and um, and it's like he's like understand the intent uh, we as human beings are not here to bend and be broken by every rule and trying to follow everything to the letter of the law out of this agony in our heart out of obedience and being beaten down but no it's like the sabbath was made um, for us as people um, to provide us with rest to provide us with a, a time where we're sustained and refreshed in our daily routine where we honor god and we remember him and we congregate together and we celebrate and all these things and, and it's like you've just got it completely wrong um, and and the, also the fact that he's like i'm i'm the lord of the sabbath and what i say 
<laughs> supersedes that. So they, they must have been furious. They're like, who is this one um, that would say this? On another Sabbath, he went into the synagogue um, and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. And I'm just thinking, um, as I'm um, as I'm reading this aloud, I keep saying this every stream, but this these are another two stories that are also shown in The Chosen. And if you haven't watched The Chosen yet, um, please do yourself a favour, download the app, watch The Chosen. It is an amazing TV series. There are two seasons out, eight episodes in each season, the biggest crowd-funded um, project ever in history. Um, it's had over, I think, 500 million views. Um, it brings Jesus to life in a way you've never seen before. And this disciples, very relatable. Um, you will laugh, you will cry. Um, but it's a free app, The Chosen, and you can also watch on YouTube. And these scenes are in there. Um, please let me know too if you have seen The Chosen before because I am I love finding fellow Chosen fans. And, and hello also, um, Mr. Poloni watching from Arizona, USA. Nice to meet you as well. Um, okay. So, so the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to the man with the shriveled hand, get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? He's like, what's, what's important? What is the heart of the matter? And uh, I just think he must have been so moved in his spirit and so grieved at their um, resistance and their inability to, to see um, what was important in that moment and their rigidness and their fixation on the letter of the law rather than the heart of what God is doing and his intentions. Um, he looked around at them all and then said to the man, stretch out your hand. He did so and his hand was completely restored. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were furious and began to discuss with one another what they might do to Jesus. I actually, but I've just got a new emotion coming up in me right now as I'm reading the scripture and I've never experienced this before in relation to this issue. But I'm actually feeling angry right now. And I haven't felt that. Angry at the religious leaders at their response there because that's so wrong. And... Um, Jesus had righteous anger at various points. I remember when he drove out the people, the religious leaders from the temple when they were selling all of these like doves and sheep and all these things in God's house. And he's like, how dare you, um, you know, um, turn my father's house into to like a marketplace. And, um, you know, you've turned this into a den of robbers. And, um, and it's like, there's this wonderful, loving, ferociousness in Jesus as well that is that bubbles up on occasion where it's like this is wrong and he's not afraid to speak strongly um, to the religious leaders when they're out of order and I think that's why um, just the everyday people loved him so much because they can see it too I think um, sometimes people who don't even know God they can see um, the heart of the matter often and what's important and sometimes people who have been in the church for a long time not always but can be blinded by religious systems to God's heart and what he's really trying to do. Um, Mr. Poloni, you've watched The Chosen too. Very good. Very well produced as well. You're right. Yes. Um, awesome. Great to meet a fellow fan. Um, so amazing story about Jesus. Just so much in there. Um, that he goes in there with power. He goes in there with love. He's not afraid. Um, and he he heals someone at the same time and somebody's hand is restored. I mean, imagine that if that was your hand <laughs> and Jesus did that. You'd be like, wow, imagine if it was your friend and you saw that happen. Mate, that's just totally amazing. Oh, the next paragraph is called the 12 apostles. Verse 12. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray. 
and spent the night praying to God. That's a long time. Anyone here done an all-nighter praying to God? <laughs> I remember when I was a teenager, we used to have some all-night prayer meetings and um, we'd get pretty tired around two, three in the morning and we'd all have our sleeping bags there and we'd try and egg each other on. We certainly didn't pray the whole night, but we did do some praying. And um, it was, but I mean, Jesus, wow. He spent the night, he went out to a mountainside to pray. I wonder if he slept out in the open, maybe it was good weather, and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. Um, I have to assume, given the, the order in which everything is said, that the implication is that this was an important decision to choose his 12 disciples out of all the disciples who were following him. Um, special 12, obviously, that he would, um, I imagine, spend more strategic time with. Um, they probably had more access to Jesus. And so he wanted to probably, I imagine he wanted to know the Father's will as to who the ones were that the Father wanted him to be with. Um, and so it reminds me, I guess, for really important decisions to if Jesus needed to pray, even the whole night, how much more do we need to be with our Father and get his heart on things? Um, um, and then it lists the, the apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter. Uh, he's a real character that pops up lots of times. His brother, Andrew. James. John. Philip. Bartholomew. Matthew. If you watch The Chosen, look out for who Matthew is because he's, he's portrayed very interestingly. Uh, he's, he's, um, they portray him as having being on the autism spectrum, which is fascinating. Um, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Um, all unique people, completely different backgrounds. Um, whom Jesus chose at different points. They're all thrown together and imagine what that would have been like for them having to learn to relate to one another and live with them. Uh, imagine the, whoa, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be, everybody's so different anyway, but they didn't choose their friends there. Jesus chose them and they would have had to learn to get along with each other and work together. Um, and I bet you they learned a lot of lessons along the way. Um, the next paragraph is called Blessings and Woes, and we'll see how far we get through this. Um, he went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured. Um, that's interesting to me. Often I think it says evil spirits here. It says impure spirits. Um, and I'm just sort of contemplating what that means. I think about purity. I have a certain sense of that word, um, impure. I mean, I'm sure it's not hard to sort of imagine that evil spirits are impure, but it, I guess it paints even more of a picture of what their influence is on a person's life. Mm -hmm. Um, so those troubled by impure spirits were cured and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Oh, that's phenomenal. That is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I just wish I could have seen that with my own eyes. And um, I want to see God's power released in measures like that. I mean, Jesus said, even greater things than these will you do. He said to his disciples, and um, he's called us to do the same. So I believe we're going to see the power of God like never before. And um, looking at his disciples, he said, blessed. Okay, and then we start the Beatitudes, which is an amazing teaching. I'm so excited. We're going to be doing the Beatitudes next. We've got a, a whole all, all of this um, words coming up, an amazing teaching. But I'm going to have to um, finish there because we just do 15 minutes for Bible Boost um, for the purpose of YouTube, just to keep it nice and short and sweet. And um, 
just to reflect on that last bit again, um, there's just so much about him healing people, isn't there? Um, and impure spirits as well. 